Hello, and we're back to uh, AP Physics. So, uh, on to uh, Newton's third law today. Uh, we've covered Newton's first and second laws, uh, believe it or not, and now we're in the, the third law. Uh, so, when a car accelerates forward, what is the force that propels the car forward? Uh, it's got to be an outside force. Well, uh, that's the force of friction between the tires and the road. And the, so, the, 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 the tires push off the, uh, off the, uh, the road. Uh, but what causes uh, what causes the space shuttle to take off, and and what uh, what allows rockets to uh, accelerate in space when there's nothing to push off of? Uh, so that's what kind of the topic of today. So if you think about standing up in a boat and you're near a near a dock, and you want to jump to the dock, uh, well, some the something has got to push you forward, uh, and and so you're going to push off the boat. All right, so the, you're gonna uh, the boat's gonna push you forward when you push off of it. So there has to be a normal force on the person by the boat to the right. Now, when they jump uh, forward, they may not make it to the dock uh, because the boat is gonna be moving backwards. Why is the boat moving backwards? Well, when the boat pushed you forward, you push the boat backwards, or vice versa, versa vice. When you push the boat backwards, the boat pushed you forward. So these forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, and they are on different objects. One one force is on the person, the other force is on the is on the boat. Uh, so we say that forces always come in pairs, um, and and this is true. Uh, there's never an isolated force, at least not one that I've I've ever heard of. Uh, and so they always come in twos, um, which is basically to say that you can't touch something without it touching you back. Uh, you can't push something without it pushing you back. Um, so when hand touches foot, foot touches hand. That's Newton's third law. Uh, equal and opposite forces uh, going on there. Um, or if we basically what it looks like is the feeler and the dealer are flipped in these uh, Newton's third law forces or interaction forces as we might call them. Or, uh, so uh, force on B by A, force on, uh, on A by B. Um, so, um, and again, remember these forces are on different objects. Uh, so here we've got a, a woman and a boy pushing on a car. We'll just look at the woman. So the woman's pushing on the car. Um, there's a force on the car, uh, by the woman. And it'd be a normal force, a contact force. Uh, the, the interaction force, the Newton's third law force is there is an equal and opposite force on the woman by the car, okay? Uh, and if I asked you which which object has the greater force on it, woman or car, you'd t say, well, I, I guess I'd have to tell you if the car was moving. The car is moving. Uh, which which has the greater force on it, the woman or the car? It would be the same. Newton's third law forces are the same uh, in magnitude, in opposite, in direction. One force is on the car, the other force is on the woman. Um, so some other examples of Newton's third law. Um, when you uh, when you catch a baseball, if someone is throwing it really really hard. Um, you know that there's a force on your hand because the, your hand stings a little bit. Um, you know that there's a force on a, on the ball because you decelerated it. That force decelerated the ball. Which has the greater force on it, hand or ball? It would be the same. Uh, we can also hammer a nail. Uh, when you hammer a nail, which has the greater force on it, the hammer or the nail, when the nail gets driven in? It'd be the same. If I tricked you again, you're not catching on. Um, the force on the nail is the same as the force on the, on the hammer. Uh, equal and opposite forces. Uh, the nail gets driven into the, into the board, and the, the hammer slows down and comes to a stop. So there's force on each of those. Um, all right, when you accelerate your car, I'm going to try to draw a car here. Okay, so the, sorry that the earth is a little uneven, but when you accelerate your car, there's a, there's a force on the car uh, by the road, by the earth, by the road, um, that causes the car to move forward. Newton's third law says that there's got to be an equal force on the road by the car. So when you, when the road pushes you forward, you push the road backwards and you actually alter the, the rotation of the earth slightly. Um, so think about that. Uh, what about if you jump up and down? Let's say you jump up 
and you're up in the air. Okay. Well, let's say you're you're touching the ground. All right. So uh, when you when you jump up in the air, the floor has to push you up. So there's a force on you uh, by the earth. The earth, the surface is pushing you up. Uh, and Newton's third law says there has to be a force on this on the earth by you. So when you push the earth up, uh, when when the earth pushes you up, you push the earth down. So you actually cause the the earth to change its orbit slightly. Uh, when you jump up up in the air, now why, what, ha what would happen if you kept jumping? Well, and, and obviously, by the way, you accelerate a lot more than than the Earth does because um, the Earth has a lot more mass. So I'm not saying you accelerate at the same rate. I'm saying there there are equal forces on you and the Earth, though. Um, so let's say, um, uh, can I draw again? And uh, and once you're in the air there is a force of gravity on you by the earth pulling you back down. So this is you jumping in the air, by the way. So there's a force of gravity on you by the, uh, by the uh, earth. Uh, Newton's third law says if there's a force on you by the earth, there has to be a force equal and opposite on the earth by you. So when the earth pulls you down, you pull the earth back into its orbit, uh, luckily. For us, you, you don't cause the orbit to change uh, permanently. So, um, anyway. Um, so, um, so there, there are equal and opposite forces involved here. The, there's a force on the, on the tire, on the car, by the, by the hand, and there's a force on the hand by the car. Um, why, why do things move if there's equal and opposite forces? I thought we said that those cancel. Well, Okay, typically I do a, a demonstration where I have two kids sit on, on carts. So picture these are the carts and the, the kids are sitting on them. Um, and they push off of each other. These maybe, these have a plunger in between them that, that when I click it'll, it'll push off between them. Um, so, so I typically start with the demonstration of that, Newton's third law. Um, so they're, when, when they push off, okay, uh, the force that's accelerating them, there's a, there's an equal and opposite force, uh, on, on each of these cars, but that equal and opposite force is on different objects. So when they push off, there's a force on each of them causing them to accelerate backwards. So if we picture them, uh, these are the force diagrams for each of these cars while they're, while they're pushing off of each other. There's a force of gravity down. There's a normal force up. So my forces in the Y cancel. We're not accelerating up or down. Um, there is a force in the X direction uh, pushing this car back. Uh, and we've got a similar force free body diagram over here uh, with the, the force on the, on the left. So these are the, this is the force on car A by car B. And this is the force on car B by car A. I've got a fly that's flying around to bother me. Um, so anyway, the reason that those forces don't cancel is because they're in different objects. Um, so if we accelerate this car, and let's assume that there's no friction, uh, which is not a good assumption considering she's uh, staying put, but it's got wheels, so we'll, we'll assume that they're frictionless wheels. Um, that, that'll work. Um, so there's a force on the ground, a force of gravity down. There's a normal force up. Those forces cancel. And then there's the, f the force of the woman on the, uh, on the car by the woman. So she's going to accelerate the car forward. Uh, now if she doesn't move backwards, there is an equal and opposite force, a normal force on the woman by the car, on the woman by the car. Okay. And what's preventing her from moving is the friction between her feet and the ground. So here, that force is canceled out because um, because she's not moving. Um, so so um, if we have a cannon fire, uh, the ball moves forward. Has anything happened to the, the cannon? All right. If you're standing behind it, maybe it might jump back a little bit. Um, if it was on frictionless ice, it would continue to slide. Um, so there's a force on the cannon or on the cannonball by the cannon. Okay. Cannon pushes ball forward. Okay. Equal and opposite is ball pushes cannon backwards. Which has the greater force on it, the ball or the cannon? It would be the same. Okay. You, you, hopefully you're getting good at this by now. The answer is always the same. If we're talking about Newton's third law forces. 
Um, so why does the, the cannon uh, accelerate so much less if it's got the same force on it as the cannonball? It's because the cannon's got a lot more mass. So it doesn't, it's got more inertia. It's lazier to change what it's doing. So even though they have the same force, big mass means little acceleration, and little mass means big acceleration uh, for the, the ball. Uh, so how does this work with uh, with exhaust? So it, it's very similar to the the cannon firing and the ball going forward and the and the uh, and the cannon moving backwards. So we're going to look at this the that's taking off uh, near the Earth's surface for right now. Not that it really matters; it would be the same if it were in outer space. So we've got this uh, this exhaust gas. So what's going on is they're mixing fuel and oxygen and and flame. And we're squirting these uh, these these reactants into the the combustion chamber at a relatively low velocity. Then once they they uh, they burn, they expand, they accelerate very very quickly. So this is very similar to the cannonball or the cannon shooting the cannonball. Each time these exhaust gases shoot to the right, okay, the 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 cannon the the shuttle moves to the left, okay, because there's a force on the exhaust by the shuttle to the right and there's a force on the shuttle by the exhaust to the left. Newton's third law. Um, so let's say you're in outer space and um, you're, you're, you're not safe like this guy and you don't have a tether uh, and you uh, find yourself floating away from the, the space shuttle and all you have is a hammer. What do you do? Or oh, you've got a drill, not a hammer. Okay, they, they don't use hammers very often, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I have seen them use drills, special drills, or very expensive drills. Very expensive drills. Um, so you've got, a, you've got a heavy drill, what do you do? Alright, hot shot, trick question, hot shot. Um, you throw the drill away from uh, the shuttle. And, and when you push the shuttle, or when you push, when you push the, the drill away from the shuttle, the drill is going to push you towards the shuttle, so you would get going backwards. Um, that would head you. Okay. Um, so let's say we've got a, a person, and we've got a, uh, they're just standing on the ground. And I said, oh, the force diagram is going to be very, very simple. We've got a force of gravity uh, on the person by the earth that's pointed down. And we've got a normal force. I'm doing this for the mouse, by the way, so it's not uh, it's not not exactly the best quality. And there's a normal force um, pushing the uh, the person back up that's canceling that out. So these are canceling the object that's stationary. Okay, are these action reaction forces? Are these Newton's third law forces? They're equal and opposite. They are not. Okay, there these these do these cancel Newton's third law forces can't cancel action reaction forces can't cancel um, because they're always on different objects these these are on the same object so these are each part of their own interaction pattern so for example when there's a force of gravity on the person by the earth down there's a force of gravity on the earth by the person up when there's a normal force on the person by the uh, by the uh, normal force on the on the person by the earth uh, up there's a normal force on the earth by the person down so these are each part of their own uh, interaction pairs so that the Newton's third law forces are action reaction forces can't do not cancel okay um, click to the next one uh, how do uh, airplanes work well uh, wings and propellers work pretty much uh, very similarly. They both rely on Newton's third law. Uh, the wings provide lift. There's uh, air friction, which provides drag. There's the force of gravity, which is weight, and there's the propeller, which provides thrust. We, I just want to look at what, how the how the wings generate lift. Um, so when when the wings go through the air, they don't fly through the through the air perfectly flat, perfectly level. They go through the air kind of tilted up like this. Now this is this is an extreme. This is tilted up way more than an airplane wing would be tilted, but it's it's uh, it's sort of this illustrative point. So so um, so what what happens here is in order to uh, cause the well the wing pushes the air down. 
Okay, so the the air hits the wing and the wing pushes the air down. Okay, so when the wing pushes the air down, what's the what's the reaction? The air pushes the wing up. All right, and this is what happens when you stick your hand out the window uh, if you're on the interstate, especially. And uh, it's a nice day, and you and you kind of tilt your hand up a little bit like that, and your hand goes up, and you tilt it down, and it goes down, and it goes up and down, and up and down. Uh, that's what you're doing. You're you're pushing the air down uh, in order to make your hand go up. Um, okay. So uh, a couple problems. So you've got a baseball mass 0.18 kilograms. Uh, it's dropped. Uh, what's the force in the acceleration of the ball and what's the force in the acceleration uh, of the earth given the earth uh, the earth's mass? Well, um, so the force of gravity on the ball is 0.18 times 9.8 which equals 1.7 newtons. So just the force of gravity equals mass times gravity. Now this is the force of gravity on the ball. Newton's third law says this, that's also the force of gravity on the earth by the ball. So that's, that's two answers. Um, the acceleration of the ball is 9.8 meters per second squared because that's how things accelerate in the presence of Earth's surface. The acceleration of the Earth, okay, it's got a whopping 1.7 newtons uh, accelerating it. It's uh, 6.0 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Um, so and that's times the acceleration. So solving for the acceleration, you get that the acceleration is 2.94 times 10 to the minus 25th meters per second squared. So it's it's not even accelerating uh, hardly at all, which is to be uh, not surprising. So um, the key thing here was that the, the force of gravity was the same on the, on the Earth and, as the ball um, in this case. Okay. So we've got that same 0.18 kilogram baseball, and it smacks into a catcher's glove, and we want to, uh, and it slows down uh, from 44.7 meters per second to zero meters per second in 0.1 seconds. And we want to figure out the force on the catcher's mitt. Well, Newton's third law says if we can figure out the force that that decelerated the ball, we we know that the force on the glove, because the force on the glove and the ball are the same. Newton's third law. So we can figure out the force on the ball based on its acceleration. The acceleration is equal to V2 minus V1 all over T, 0.1 seconds, and we get minus uh, 44.7 uh, meter, I'm sorry, minus 447 meters per second squared. Uh, the negative means that it's the, the force is uh, opposite the direction of motion on the ball. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about that negative though uh, from here on out. It's just asking for the force, not the magnitude, or not the direction. So now, uh, we know the acceleration of the ball. The force uh, on the ball required to do that, the mass times acceleration, uh, equals uh, 80.5 newtons. Okay. All right. So uh, here you've got a, a little kid, a skinny kid, and a, and a thick kid. I've got thick lines. Uh, so... And they, they push off. Who has the greater force on them if they, they push off? You got the strong kid and you got this weak kid. Uh, he's real heavy, he's real light. Newton's third law, if you haven't caught on yet, says that the force is going to be the same. The, the force is the same between them. What happens if we put a rope now between them? Now they pull. Who's going to feel the greater force? The, uh, the skinny kid or the, or the, the thicker kid? Still the same. Okay, Newton's third law. Just because we put a rope there doesn't doesn't change anything. Um, the rope just transfers the force. Uh, so, for example, as soon as one one side lets go, the other side falls backwards because that force, uh, you know, they can't exert a force on it with uh, no resistance going back from it. So, as soon as one person lets go, that force drops to zero, and uh, that force drops to zero on both sides. Uh, so, if we've got two people playing. Uh, tug of war um, and this is the force diagram for each one of them uh, this force of tension is the same okay the, the, the tension is the same on all sides of the rope the left side of the rope the right side of the rope and in between the rope it's uh, anywhere in between the, the force of tension is is whatever it is 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 the same um, and um, so if we have them pull towards each other 
Um, and here now we've got rid of friction. Um, we've got a, a thin kid and a thick kid. Um, they're both going to feel the same force via this rope, this force of tension. And are they going to accelerate the same? No. The uh, the skinnier kid is going to accelerate more, and this the the thicker kid is going to uh, is going to accelerate less. Um, okay, and that is that for today.